Okay. Welcome back to Keith and Kevin's Power and Restoration. Today we got part two of the PO128. We got the one side of the code fixed, which was a uh, coolant temp sensor, also uniquely runs the fan controller. So we got that side of the fan fixed. We don't have the fan constantly running, but during testing we realized that yeah, the uh, thermostat was definitely bad. One of the easy ways to tell on these that the thermostat's bad is you let it sit for about 12 hours, and the colder it is outside, the better this test kind of thing. But if you squeeze on this upper hose here, when you start it up, and you squeeze on this hose, and you feel heat immediately coming out, and pressure, and a lot of it, and eventually it'll feel like a squish bomb, like a, like a heavy sponge. But when it's not hot and it's not full of pressure, the thermostat's bad. Now we've already proved that a couple different ways, but to just go one step farther, on this particular 3.9, it has one single thermostat. Now some of these 3.9s actually have two. This one uniquely has one, being the GTTP model. But the bad side on this one, and where the flaw comes in, is when the thermostat goes bad, you have suction on this side actually opening the thermostat open. And when the thermostat is bad, it can't actually shut at its controlled temperatures, therefore giving you increased warm-up time, giving you the PO128. Um, it will actually cause you an EGR failure later on down the road because the engine will actually try to put more fuel into the motor to try to heat it up. And it's just the things that OBD2 will go through to try to run your missions. At which point, it can cause damage further down the road. This is one thing, if you do have this problem, do not wait on. Now, this one's going to be kind of interesting because they put the thermostat at the low spot, not the high spot. Normally your thermostat would be on the upper hose, but GM, since about roughly 97 or so, and in some models they actually put the thermostat on the inlet side of the water pump instead of the hot side on the outlet. So this one is actually considered an inlet thermostat instead of an outlet thermostat. They still work the same. Uh, depending on temperatures most of the time it's about a 170 opening on the bottom but on these we're looking at this one was actually 195 cold on the bottom it's very unique so uh, enough of my yapping we're gonna get to it we're gonna get some hoses out of the way because we're gonna do some hose maintenance while we're in here but it also help make some room too to get at that thermostat so without any further ado let's get out hey my everything but hose pliers yeah that's been off a couple times and not with the correct tool. That hose is definitely chewed up. Wow. I wonder if we're going to find this water pump's been replaced. I think it has. It looks new. Yeah. Which is good. We were going to replace it, but, you know, my 20 years and the way the hose is feeling, I had pressure. I just didn't have controlled pressure. How are we going to get to that hose cleaner? Folks, since this is a really tight fit, there's no way that this camera and his arms are going to fit. So what I'm showing you is the lower hose. I'm showing you the bolts that need to be broke loose. But there's two bolts like these right here. Uh, the one you can see on the other side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's as good as we can get, but there's a bolt right there where my flashlight's shining. You can kind of see the head of it. It's right there. This is a hard one to record, folks. So give us a like if you like our tough recording. One little bolt, you got her. So it's a stud and bolt design. That hasn't changed since 1989. Nope. I'm just surprised there isn't 16 grounds on it. <laughs> they finally learned their lesson? Or just put the ground somewhere else. <laughs> Another common point you have to check. Check circuit A to circuit B. <laughs> oh, folks. I don't know if I'm belly. Oh. There's just no good way about this. Well, all the bolts are out and it's not coming off. Well, it's it's O-ring, so yeah. Yeah, mallet, or uh, mallet or whack them all a little bit. When in doubt, just get a bigger hammer. Yep. Women don't find you attractive when they find you handy. It's in there. Oh wow, that is a hunky design. Now we just gotta figure out how... You gotta pull it straight out.
We're replacing hoses since they're about 10 years old and we have a little bit of dry rot. So we're gonna, the small hoses are fine. But well, being that the person who owns this car travels quite a bit, we wanna make sure we give them every source of reliability we can give them. Remember, you have to ratchet that. Oh, antifreeze is still pouring out. Got it. Got it. Oh, that's that uh, radiation that's causing a mutation. I don't know. I pulled this black shit off, but uh, I don't oh, really... you're circumcised now. Or is that a reusable Polish condom? <laughs> oh yeah. I think your springy is a little out of step there. Is it, this, is, this isn't like a screwing design, is it? No, it's the O-ring you're fighting. rattle valve in there. Oh yeah, that thing's done. Oh yeah. There's your PO128. Bet you can't do that with a new one. Okay, there's the hot water outlet, but I don't know if I can actually get this. Okay. There's where the thermostat sits on the block side. It's actually an integral part of the thermostat or a timing cover. Kind of interesting that way. Alright, we're going to go ahead and insert the thermostat now. Very easy to do on this one. Make sure your inside's clean or else you won't get a good seal. Yeah, you want that clean. No RTV whatsoever. And then make sure that your line matches up with your bolt holes. It just fits in there like that. Yeah, that's it. Now, just rustle it back in next. It should sit like sits up, cockeyed, or does it sit like this? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. It's perpendicular with the line. No, I'm saying how this sits. If it's got to be, if the shaft's got to be pointed up, or if it's just got to be pointed. I think okay, so. the stopper was up top. Okay. Okay, we are at the point to where we're going to start putting water back in the system. Now, unique to the 3.9, they do not use any air bleeders, say like the 3.4, 3.1, or 2.8. So we won't have that to, to deal with. But, uh, being this is a closed loop system, you can only fill that tank to half and only fill it to half as needed. So it's going to kind of change our bleed procedure just a little bit, but not too bad. Um, by my estimation it should actually bleed out quicker being it's the highest point in the system and it's actually kind of well thought out so we'll see about that one this is the first time we worked on a 3.9 so it's a if this is the sign of things to come we got a few tools to get but other than that I'm kind of impressed the architecture looks pretty sound so all right fill away did you put your peacock back in Now this car was originally equipped with Dexcool, but we are using any color antifreeze from Walmart. Uh, like I said in one of my other videos, the uh, two gallons of antifreeze for $11. You can mix with about 99% of the vehicles out there. The ones I would tell you not to do that with would be Ford products that use the gold style antifreeze. This would cover your power strokes, uh, 60, 64. You wouldn't want to use green color, but if you got a car that had Dex Cool, you can definitely use it. Okay, at this point, we're uh, looking at what the computer's seeing. Right now, it's saying the outside temperature is 32 degrees, which is correct. Now, the funny thing is, it says the coolant is 51 degrees, and it said that last night during testing, so I don't know. Hmm, maybe it is truly 55 degrees on the block or 51 degrees. All right, at this point, we're just going to go through a couple of start and uh, stops because of the fact we just want to make sure we're getting the system bled and we don't have any dry spots or um, basically no coolant passing by very vital parts like heads and, you know, intakes and pistons and all that good stuff. So, all right, let's see how she goes.
Okay, we're already climbing. No, I'm going to have you run up to about 100. 128. Made it home for a second there. 129. Okay, kill it. Alright. And there go the bubbles. You're going to drain it down? Oh, should I should probably put some more in there. No. In fact, you got too much in there. Really? Better hope it sucks them down. <laughs> I think it will, but it, it, the way that thermostat is on the inlet side, it means it's going to take a little bit for that thermostat to open. We're going to have to do this a few times. Once it does, that thing's going to suck down. Yeah, this is pretty typical. Pretty typical. As the bubbles escape, that's what makes the room for more coolant to come in. As it cools off, it will actually suck some down. But I think this system keeps it pretty consistent from what I'm looking at. You're only going to get so much and then you're going to have to restart it. Because you got to get it hot enough for the thermostat to open without cooking parts. It's going to climb quick because it's got air bubbles in it. We had the problem last night where it wouldn't climb that fast. And now we're on the opposite because we've got air bubbles. That's pretty normal. That's why you got to do this in a prescribed manner like we're doing. All right, let's go ahead and run it for about uh, a minute. If it gets above the middle line, shut it off. If I don't call it before that. Okay, it's dropping. Okay, 136. Shut it. Oh, this is going to be an on and off game with this thing. Yep. Alright, well, you got an hour to kill? 